during this time I'm at the hospital and I'm with my dad who has got his Bible out and we're praying and I'm reading the Bible and I'm like, God, you know, save my mom. And I'm praying and I am with my dad and I'm like really in there and, you know, and she ended up dying. And I remember at that moment, I was like, you know, God, I asked you over and over and over and you didn't save her. And I was pissed. Hi, and welcome to the Saved by Grace and the Kingdom Influencer Podcast. I'm your host, Sylvia Puentes. And I'm your co-host, Steve Hopper. And we've combined forces to bring you stories of hope, restoration, and God's faithful love. And to feature influencers who are using their platforms to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Please like, share, and subscribe. And welcome to the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. I am Steve Hopper. I am one of your hosts, and I'm here with my co-host, Sylvia Puentes. Hey, Sylvia. Hi. We have an exciting guest today, y'all, a very good friend of mine. We, uh, My brother from another mother, we go back many years, and over the years, we've grown in our relationship. Sylvia, I know that you've had an opportunity to, to meet Mark on a couple of occasions, but uh, never really dove into his story uh, too much in those meetings. So are you excited to hear uh, what Mark is going to share today on the show? I am. I'm super excited to dive in and hear what Mark's going to share. Awesome. Awesome. Well, guys, let me give him a proper introduction. Like I said, he's a very good friend of mine. He is a international speaker. He is a coach that is impacting lives uh, all around the world uh, at a very high rate super successful uh, in the industry of marketing, specifically focusing a lot of attention uh, in online marketing, video, and utilizing all the tools that are out there to available to help people get their messages out to the masses. Uh, You can find out more about what he does at markharbert.com, but this guy is an absolute rock star. Uh, He's played a major role in, in guiding me and growing my business and helping me get my message out there. So I'm super excited to welcome to the show today, Mark Harbert. Mark, welcome, buddy. What's up, Steve? What's up, Sylvia? Great to be here, guys. (laughs) Thanks for having me. So, you know, Mark, on on this show, we like to, you know, feature just powerful, powerful testimonies, stories of of God just making an impact in people's lives, uh, stories of deliverance, uh, stories of healing, stories of salvation, uh, you know, just all the wonderful things that come from what Jesus did on the cross for us, right? All those years ago. And your story is a very powerful one, and I know it's going to resonate with a lot of of, of people today. So, uh, you know, I kind of want to jump right into it with you, man. I want you to take us take us back, take us on a, a, a faith journey, Mark Harbert's faith journey, uh, because I know there was some ups and downs yeah. along the way. There was some heartache along the way. Um, there was some revelation that took place along the way. And I just know that your story is going to have an impact on our listeners. So uh, take us back, man, uh, you know, all the way, yeah. all the way back to childhood. What was life like, <laughs> uh, you know, before? Yeah. Well, I, you know, my, my first off, it's great to be here with you guys. Uh, you're both great. And yeah, Steve and I, we've known each other for several years now and we've really gotten to know each other. Steve's just a great friend. And, you know, but, uh, my faith journey is, you know, I grew up in the church, really. My dad got born again when I was four years old and I vaguely remember being at a church and I was with him and my dad went up, did an altar call. He was crying, you know, he was, and I just remember he, he went up there and left me there in the, in the pews. And I remember the people behind me, they're like, it's okay. Your dad's okay. You know, and that's what, that's my earliest, re- your dad's okay. He'll be right back. And I'm crying too. Cause my dad's crying and I don't get what's going on. And anyway, and that was my earliest memory. And so after that, my dad really got very much involved in the church. Um, he became the, the, uh, like every Sunday they would have, um, it was a Sunday evening service and my dad would be the bus driver and he'd go around and pick up all the senior citizens. Yeah. And I would go with him and I would, I would get out and put a little step out, you know, so that they could walk up and then I'd put it up. And so that was some of my earliest memories of being involved in the church. 
And my dad very much was involved in the church. My mom was very hesitant because she grew up, you know, Roman Catholic and my dad was going to a Nazarene church. And so there was a little bit of conflict there, but so I grew up, eventually we ended up going to a Lutheran church. I grew up in the Lutheran church. Um, and I started going through catechism. And when I reached eight, you know, eighth grade, I got confirmed. And my dad said, if you don't want to go to church anymore, you don't have to, I don't want to make you, I want you to go. And I'm like, cool, I'm out, you know, <laughs> so, you know as the teenager, I'm like, yep, I'm out. Yeah. All right. I've been going, you know, but my dad also taught me a lot of things in those years that I look back on. I'm like, wow, man. Cause those stuck with me, even though I wasn't crazy about being there. So anyway, I, I go through, you know, my teenage years, um, I get to 17 and, um, my mom got sick and rewinding 10 years earlier, my, my mom was diagnosed with, uh, leukemia. And this is like probably 83 ish. Um, and so maybe, maybe a little earlier, I don't remember, but anyway, she got leukemia, went through a whole series of you know, blood transfusions and all things like that. And so 1990 comes along and she gets sick and she had beaten this leukemia, by the way, she gets sick, ends up in the hospital. And in my mind it was like, Oh, my mom's going to get out. She's going to be fine. And well, this time was different because she got very, very sick, got pneumonia. And I just remember, um, you know, this time I'm not really in the church. I'm not really following God. And I show up at the, at the, the hospital with my, my younger brother, who's like 12 at the time. And, uh, we drove there and I, as soon as I get there, my dad whisks both of us into a side room with the doctor. And he immediately tells us, he's like, I don't know how to tell you this boys, but your mom is going to die. And immediately, like my brother and I just break down and we're we don't know what the heck's going on. And we're like, why I'm standing there and I'm like, why dad? Why, 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 what the hell? You know, like what's going on? Like I'm freaking out. And, and I just keep asking why, like, I don't understand. Like, tell me why. And after my little brother was just like, you know, crying profusely, doesn't know what to do. They pull my little brother out of the room and I was there with the doctor and my dad's like, okay, you want to know why? Here's why. And the doctor explained that back when my mom was getting blood transfusions for leukemia, she got a tainted blood supply with HIV in it. And this is before they, they started doing the tests for HIV. And if you know, in the eighties and early nineties, when you got HIV, it was pretty much a death wish or not a death. It was just a death sentence. You know, that was really what it was. And, and that's what happened. She, she got um, AIDS related pneumonia and she ended up dying in September of 1990. But once I had found that out from the doctors, I really, my mom was in a coma for like two months or not two months, excuse me, two weeks, two to three weeks. During this time I'm at the hospital and I'm with my dad who has got his Bible out and we're praying and I'm reading the Bible and I'm like, God, you know, save my mom. And I'm praying and I am with my dad and I'm like really in there and, you know, and she ended up dying. And I remember at that moment, I was like, you know, God, I asked you over and over and over and you didn't save her. And I was pissed. And I, from that second, I just like stopped and I was mad. I was mad at God for taking my mom. Yeah. Of course he didn't take her. You know, we know he didn't, but that's what I'm thinking. Uh, and I was just angry, very angry. And so at this time I am, you know, a senior in high school, number one, I failed that senior year that my mom died. So I had to go an extra year cause I was up at the hospital for so long. I missed so much schoolwork. I couldn't get caught up. Um, so anyway, I graduate and right out of, um, you know, and, and my last year I'm, getting into all kinds of things. You know, I'm mad. I'm with my buddies. We're drinking and smoking pot and doing all kinds of things, doing some things I'm shouldn't be. And I was like, what am I going to do after high school? I joined the military. I went in the Navy and I went in the Navy. And before I left, my dad was trying to tell me, Mark, you need Jesus. And he's trying to, he's trying to get through to me and I'm not having it. Like, I'm just like, you know, I'm not having it. 
uh, I don't need it. I'm good, dad. Thank you. And, but I go in the Navy and, um, I went in and I was ridiculously homesick. Like I, you know, it's the first time I'd really been away from home. Um, anyway, I'm, you know, living in Florida. I was stationed in Jackson, Jacksonville, and I get in, I get in this relationship and with this woman and it just destroyed me. This relationship it was bad, very abusive verbally, like something I'd never experienced. And it was just very, very bad and was with her for probably, I don't know, eight to 10 months. And when I got out of the Navy, I got out on a medical, I was broken and I got home. And that's when I was like, I can't do this on my own. And I remember um, I was watching this video of this kind of dramatic play and it, it was like a Christian play and it affected me so much. I was literally at my house and I'm getting on my hands and knees and I'm just like, God, please take, you know, take over my life. My life is a mess. Like, uh, I barely got out of the Navy with an honorable discharge. I mean, you know, I was even smoking pot in the Navy. Oh my gosh. That was God's grace that I didn't get caught with that. Uh, and thank God that I didn't. Uh, and it was just God's grace on me through that whole time. And that was where it kind of started. Now we have a whole nother story that starts from that point, but we can talk about that if you want. But that yeah, was kind of yeah. what really got to a point where God actually became an important part of my life. Mm. So, you know, Mark, there's part of your story that, well, there's a lot of your story that I can relate to because, um, <clears throat> I was angry at God and blamed God for uh, the first part of my life, 40 years. Yeah. I was 40 when I had my encounter and got saved, but uh, my dad was murdered when I was a year old. Mm. And uh, I blamed God. And I now know that when I was very young, the enemy whispered into me, you know, in my, into a thought into my mind that if God was good, why did he do this? Why did he yeah. make, why did he take my dad? And yeah. so I can relate to having that, you know, anger and feeling like, so did you not think I was worthy of having that parent that my dad or, you know, perhaps you, yeah. I prayed and I asked you God to yeah. save my mom. Yeah. And yeah. That's, and you know, that's, that's so that's relatable. Hard. Yeah, it is. Cause a lot of people think that, you know, um, they go through a hardship. Um, and it wasn't really honestly until, I don't know, even probably a few years later where I started to really realize that even through that hardship, God was actually with me the whole time. And mm -hmm. he was, you know, carrying me. And, and I, I think that's, that was the, the biggest thing. Um, but you know, my dad too, my dad was just a rock, you know, and he was always telling me every time I'd come to him with any problem, he'd be like, son, you need Jesus in your life. You're, <laughs> you're missing you, we're a three part being. He kept telling, I remember you said, we're a three part being we're body, soul, and spirit. You're walking around with body, soul, and you're missing the most vital part of your life. And he just would tell me that over and over. And I would be like, ah, dad, I don't, you know, and finally that I just got to that point where I, you know, just yeah. surrendered, it, you know? Wow. What a powerful story, man. What a powerful story, you know? You know, one, one of the aspects of your story that that gets me every time is that, you know, your mom was going through all of this for for all those years, you know, going through, you know, uh, leukemia and battling it and, you know, getting these blood transfusions and, and all of these things that she was going through yeah. and she protected you all from that. Like she didn't yeah, only, want, yeah. The only people that knew were her, my dad, and my grandmother. That was it. She didn't tell anybody because she didn't want anybody to feel sorry for her. She just wanted to live the rest of her life, and she wanted to enjoy her family. And I'm I'm grateful she did. I'm so glad I didn't know, you know, because, yeah. you know, it, it was it was a big deal. But yeah, wow. So you get out of the navy, you you get on your knees, man, and. Uh, yeah. You yeah. call out to God. What's life been like since then, bro? So this is another part of the story that takes a twist. And uh, but when I 
when I did that, my dad had gotten involved with a, a ministry. I'm not going to ever, I'm not going to mention their name or anything like that, but um, he got involved with a ministry that was actually a cult. And, um, you know, I, so I got involved in this cult mm. and um, it was at a time where, and I didn't know any better, you know, I mean, I, I know I grew up doing things, but I was never in it full heartedly. You know, um, this time I'm going full in, like, you know, I'm vulnerable, vulnerable, you know, I, I, I need it in my life. I need God. And so I'm, I start going to this place and I'm head in, man. And what I didn't realize is that how controlling and legalistic this, this place was, how literally they were just controlling people's lives. And here I am just thinking, Hey, this is, I'm, I've come from the military. So I'm, it's not like I'm completely immune to people telling you what to do, Correct. you know? So for me, it's almost kind of normal at this point. And, uh, but I just got involved. I, I got heavily involved, started going on some of their programs, doing things like that, but it was a highly, highly controlling place, very legalistic. And I just ended up seeing a lot of things that were over the years that I was involved with that place that started to blow me away. And when I started to wake up is when, you know, the head, you know, pastor, if you want to call him that, you know, got caught sleeping around with many women and, you know, that all came out. And then I was like, wait a second, something's going on here. And that's when I started to really kind of open my eyes to what was going on. And, um, but that was, you know, a huge, I was pissed about that too. Cause I, I had just, you know, all the manipulation and the things and, and, but the cool thing was that came out of all of it is that's where I met my wife. And if I hadn't have gone through that, I look back now and I look at how some of the times, you know, the trials we go through and the things that we experience, I wouldn't change it for the world because going through that actually helped me come out of my shell. Like yeah. I was one of those guys that was very like afraid to speak up. Like I didn't want to rock the boat, didn't want anything that helped me come out because honestly, after that, I was like, I will never be manipulated again. Yeah. Never. Yeah. And I, you know, when you start to recognize some of those <laughs> kind of controlling things and I was like, the only person that's going to control me is Jesus. <laughs> you know, I, I'm like, I, I just, it was, it was, it was a growth period for me. You know, and of course, I, I'm very involved in our church now, which is fantastic. I love our church, you know, but it, that was just another growth period, you know, and I, and I don't I didn't that I did not blame God for at all because yeah. I knew that was not God. You know, I don't I'm now a lot more mature now where I can recognize like things that's not of God. I'm not going to blame him for what a bad representative does, you know, right. and so it's it's a lot different. We actually, we see that a lot. Um, there's a lot of church hurt yeah. right, that, that goes around. And unfortunately, it can drive people away from their relationship with Jesus. And uh, that's that's a great point that you made, that this that's yeah. not him. That's, that's the yeah. human, but that's not him. Yeah. Well, Jesus had church hurt. Look who, yeah. <laughs> look who crucified him. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. the Pharisees, yeah. you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, so yeah, yeah, he had it too. Yeah, absolutely. Rejected and hurt. And yeah. yeah. So, so Mark, so you, uh, you, you obviously met your wife in this cult and, and, and yeah. she was obviously feeling the same way that you were, bro. Right. Like, oh yeah. yeah. Something's wrong here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, so you guys, you guys move forward and you have a daughter Yep. Right. Yep. We, we've we've yep. got a daughter and yeah. So, so talk a little bit about, let's talk a little bit about the professional side because, you know, part of this show obviously is, you know, you're using your platform uh, to glorify God as a kingdom influencer. Right. And so, you know, you're big in the internet community. You're doing a lot of big things. How did all that come about, bro? Like, you know, how did you get into that? And, you know, was there a moment? Because I, I know for me personally, you know, when I got into business, you know, I was obviously I was a believer. I wasn't walking with the Lord like I should have been and uh, yeah. wasn't, you know, hadn't fully surrendered my life ultimately to him at that point. But I was a believer. You know, I, I, I was a Christian. 
Um, I believed in Jesus, right? But I didn't have necessarily have the relationship and all that. So here I am going into the business world. I'm a Christian, but it's not really at the forefront of my business, right? Like I, I didn't even understand what all that looked like, you know? Yeah. So talk a little bit about how you got into this internet marketing and maybe if, if there was a point or not, I mean, did you jump into it from day one saying, I'm going to glorify God with this business or, or was yeah. that something that came as you move forward? Like talk a little bit about that. I'm, 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 I'm curious to know. So when I first started, um, I it actually got started in network marketing in 2000. And this was before I actually met my wife, it's before I moved out to California where I met her and, and um, so I, I got the entrepreneurial bug from network marketing. And, and so I, I did that for a couple of years. And then um, I, I kind of got out of it when I moved to California. And eventually when I met my wife, we got married, I started getting that entrepreneurial bug again. It, you know, that network marketing had awakened in me like this, you know, entrepreneurial spirit. And so I then got involved again in the in the network marketing industry, uh, but around 2007 ish, 2008, I started kind of getting involved in the internet. I was just like, "There's got to be a better way to build this thing." Like you know, the internet is here; it's not going anywhere. So I search how to make it online, you know, all these things, and I start going down the rabbit hole. And next thing you know, I'm spending hours every day researching, figuring out, buying courses, connecting, buying programs, you know, going through all these different um, things. And I ended up in 2000, early 2009, getting involved in this online marketing community. And um, I just kept educating myself. I just kept taking a little step here, there, a little step there. I was in a learning mode. Um, I wasn't really having a lot of success with it, but until 2012, when um, I was living in Chile, my wife and I had moved to Chile after the 2008 crash. We ended up losing our house in 2009. We moved down to Chile and I was like determined, you know, in South America, I did not want to, you know, work a job. I wanted to work my business. And so I'm really kind of, you know, going along, still struggling. I ended up getting a job at an English Institute for a short period. Uh, but something one day just snapped and i remember specifically this is like early 2012 and we were really struggling we had you know financially it's not like we this was like a day-by-day -day walk with god he never you know we always had our need met we always had food on the table but i just remember like walking into the kitchen and my wife is standing there with the kitchen you know the the refrigerator door open and she's like honey we really need food and i just remember like this moment of disgust came over me like it was like this it was almost like this tingling warm like disgust feeling and i was like i'm so sick of this like i'm so tired of this and i just went into all out action mode like i was creating 10 videos a day at times like i was just like pumping out videos like a madman like a machine gun and um that was that was when it and 90 days later i had my first five figure month online and you know ever since i've just and the amazing thing was is like this community was really big there's a lot of people they, they do weekly webinars and there's a hundred you know thousand two thousand people on these so i'm getting all these results and one day they reach out and they're like hey would you come on and teach uh you know teach us what you're doing. I'm like, sure. And I get on the webinar and there's so many people and I share what I'm doing. And, and it's like, next thing I know, people are like, who is this guy? Like I immediately have this huge following That's cool. and people are like, boy, you're like an overnight success. I'm like, yeah, I've been trying this since 2008. There's no overnight success. Here. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. You know about that, <laughs> you know? And, uh, but that's kind of how I got involved. And you asked about, did I come out of the gate glorifying God? And the answer yeah. was yes. I actually was, but I also followed some very bad advice because I was trying to uh, um, learn. I, I'm just was learning, right. you know, and somebody had said, um, you know, you really shouldn't put your religion out there because you're going to turn a lot of people off. And I actually learned, you know, I listened to that. That happened so to I me too, Mark. It happened yeah. to me too, bro. In the beginning, yeah. man, I was told the same yeah. exact thing, dude. 
Yep. Now, I didn't hide the fact that I was a Christian. Right. But I didn't make it front and center. Didn't lead with it. Yeah. I didn't lead with it. And I still don't today. Right. But people also know. But he here's the thing. Like, people know who I am and where I stand. I have it on my blog. It's there. Everybody can read about it. It's all part of it. But what I do know is that over time, God started revealing to me, like, what he wanted me to do and how he wanted to do my business. And while I don't lead with it, it is a core part of what I teach. Yeah. You know, people get into my membership and, you know, we like stage one of my framework that I have is per, it's called personal philosophy. And one of the mainstays in there is faith and, and making that that's a core part of, of what I teach. So I kind of pull people in with what they want yeah. and then I give them what they need and what they really ultimately need is Jesus. Yeah. And so it's kind of, I don't know if you want to call it a bait and switch. I don't think it is because I'm <laughs> very, it's not what I do, but no, it's just getting them in the back door, bro. Back door and I'm in. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a way to do it these days. You know, John Maxwell's super good at it, man. You know, he leads with yeah. leadership Yeah. and, um, yeah. And they end up coming to know Jesus. He's brought a lot of people uh, yeah. to Jesus through his ministry. But um, so you got your fearless influencer T-shirt on, yeah. man. That yeah. that's nice. Um, obviously, it's that's a a, there. yeah. It's got the lion on it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, lions on the other. There you go. Yeah. So you got your fear, fearless influencer T-shirt on again. You know, this is a this is a brand that God's put on your heart. Like, you know, just, uh, you know, I mean, it's God's the foundation of that f fearless influencer yeah. brand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. It was a huge, a huge thing too. And, um, I actually spent a lot of time, um, cause I wanted to make sure, you know, this is, you know, God's thing. And we actually created a manifesto, which is, you know, um, where it, God is the whole center. Like the last line of it, you know, we talk about it, it kind of builds in like an ethical standard of marketing. But the last part of it is in this identity, I discover more than just a means to earn a living. I'm embracing God's call to be a catalyst for change and a co-laborer of the legacy he's given me to create. Mm -hmm. And that's that's how we end it, you know, because awesome. it really is about that. And And yeah. my message to people is like, God's given everybody a message that yeah. they're, they're meant to share with the world. And that's why I, for me, online marketing is that way to do that. Yeah. It's the channel today that people use to get their information and we have to use it, yeah. you know, and that's, that's the key. So give everybody a, a real quick, like Reader's Digest version of what Kingdom Influence, or not Kingdom Influencer, that's <laughs> that's, us. that's our program. <laughs> <laughs> fearless Influencer, right? Yeah. Tell, tell everybody yeah. what Fearless. You know, it's so funny I said that because you and I were just talking about this recently, you know, just being kindred spirits, bro, and, yeah. and how long we've known each other. You know, I come out with this Kingdom Influencer brand. You've got the Fearless Influencer brand. Like neither one of us saw each other doing this. It just kind of happened behind the scenes. Yeah. And, and yeah. that, that, that word influencer, uh, yeah. ultimately played a part, but they're both foundationally, uh, for God, but uh, give everybody a reader's digest version of, yeah. of, of what the fearless, fearless influencer program is. I've been doing this a long time and I see so much just crap online. I mean, like it's never ending ever since I've been doing this. It's been a long time. There's just so much junk online and that I see people promoting. There's lots of, you know, unethical things, a lot of great people too, you know, yeah. but the whole premise of it was like, how can we create a movement of people who do things on the up and up, who have their customer's best interest at heart, who's not just looking to make a sale, but they're looking to actually make a sale and have an impact. Right. You know, what part of our manifesto is, is like, be willing to lose a sale. You know, if it's not right, essentially, if it's not right for the customer, yeah. be willing to lose the sale, you know? And I just have seen so much where people are hard twisting people's arms, things like that. And I don't like that. Yeah. And so the whole premise of it was, is not only to create a movement of ethical people that want to, 
you know, make God the center, but also giving them all the, the frameworks of what they need to be successful online. So for months, I'm thinking about this and I'm like, okay, God, like, you know, I'm, I'm waiting on you. And I waited a while yeah. to, to, you know, to come up with this name. Cause I had another membership, but I, I rebranded it with this. And I'm like, God, I need a name. I need this. I need that. And I just kept pursuing it. I had conversations with some other marketing buddies and, and I'm like throwing around these names. And it was just like, all of a sudden one day, I always knew I wanted to have fearless in it. I knew that was yeah. part, but I'm like, what? And I would check domain names and I'm like, why isn't, you know, why can't I find, you know, and finally one day fearless influencer. I'm like, yeah, but that domain's probably taken. <laughs> so and I it check was. it and it was taken. And I told my buddy on and like a week later, he sends me a message like, dude, fearless influence is open. I don't know what happened, but it's open. Go buy it. Wow. I'm like, all right. Wow. Well, I ran over and bought it. And wow. uh, that was awesome. kind of how it happened. So it was like God, God opened that door unless I just spelled it wrong. which I don't think <laughs> That's awesome, bro. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. So in the program, man, you're helping people, you know, obviously market and grow and yeah. and do things the right way. Right. And so. Obviously, you focus a lot of attention on video. Video is huge. Video is king. So you work with people a lot on on utilizing, you know, video to get their messages out there and all that good stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. My my flagship product too is called the No Fear Video Marketing System, and so the Fearless brand has always been something I've always God. I think God has just given me that yeah. because everything we do or don't do, you either have fear or faith. There's mm. it's one or the other. And um, without faith, you're going to you're going to have fear mm. and we all deal with it. You know, all of we all deal with fear at some point in our lives, yeah. no matter till the day we die or Jesus returns. We're going to be dealing with that. Uh, but I think, you know, helping people realize that and, and be, um, you know, fearless in what they do and fearless in the calling God's given them. That's that's the goal. Yeah. Love it. So. love it. Love it. Love it. So everybody can go to what? MarkHarbor.com, man. See all the stuff you got going on. And yeah, it's my blog, free content there. You know, I, I've got some goodies over there too and stuff like that, but you know, absolutely. It's my hub. Well, listen, bro. I, uh, always, I, you know, I love, I love uh, every opportunity that we get to spend together, man. You've, uh, yeah. you've had a big impact on my life, man. And, and I just, I love you to death, buddy. And I know, I know Sylvia's biting at the bit. She uh, <laughs> she's dying to jump in and and yeah. share with you what what God put on her heart today for you, bro, as our guest. But yeah. I just want to encourage everybody: go connect with Mark. Go to markharbor.com. See all the good stuff that he's got going on there. Uh, I I'm I'm you know so thankful that I met him years ago and that I locked arms with him and that he's in my circle of influence because again. You know, he's just an amazing person to have in your circle of influence, uh, yeah. you know, both on, you know, the professional side and on the spiritual side as well. And and I'm just glad to, to call you my brother, brother. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I knew when I, I, I told this before, but the first time I ever saw you speak was in 2018. And I just remember I didn't even know you. I, I saw you speak and I was like, holy moly, this guy is so good. And I don't think he realizes how good he really is. <laughs> Like you had me captivated with your story, man. And I, I just knew that. I had to meet you. So that's awesome, bro. I appreciate that very much, man. And uh, obviously we've got to get your story in a book. That's something we keep, <laughs> we keep talking about. Yeah. Mark Harvard. Yeah. Has, bro, it's got to get in that book, man. It's going to, it's going to reach places you ain't reaching right now with that video. I promise you. But anyways, yeah, that's for sure. um, Sylvia, I know that, uh, I know God put something on your heart for, for Mark today. You want to share? He did. He did. And so, Mark, I always um, ask the Lord to give me a scripture to, you know, impress a scripture upon my heart for the guests. And um, with you, he gave me two. And mm -hmm. as you're sharing your story, uh, I was I, I'm always like, wow, <laughs> God really does know what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. um, so the first one that he gave me was um, Joshua 1, 9. And it reads, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Mm. And, wow. 
And the other one is uh, Isaiah 30, 21. And your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it, when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. Mm -hmm. So wow. So I have, to, I have to tell you that Joshua 1, 9, it's so interesting you bring that verse up because <laughs> that was one of the very first verses that I ever really like memorized. Yeah. You know, and I remember that one was the one I would always say to myself when I was feeling fear about something. So it's interesting that you, yeah. if that one well, came to your, you know, <laughs> I think it's just confirmation that he speaks. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. So. Amen. 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 Well, Mark, listen, man, would you, uh, would you mind doing us the honor, man, of just closing us out in, in prayer and, and praying sure. for everybody that's listening right now and, and, and before I turn over to Mark to pray, I just want to say, you know, if you're watching this, if you're listening to this right now, uh, you know, we make a lot of choices in life. Uh, we, we face a lot of things in life and we make a lot of decisions and choices along the way. Uh, but when you take that last breath, there's only going to be one choice that's really going to matter. And that's whether or not you accepted uh, the salvation that was given to you, offered to you uh, when Jesus gave his life for you so many years ago. And if you haven't made a decision yet to surrender your life uh, to him, if you haven't made a decision yet to receive uh, that salvation, then do that today. Um, you know, you don't have to get fancy with it. Uh, just ask God, take over your life. That's what I did. It's what Mark did. It's what Sylvia did. And, um, and we're better for it. And uh, so anyways, uh, Mark, would you pray us out of here, bro? Absolutely. Heavenly Father, we're so, so grateful and thankful for your love for us, how you take care of us, how you look and seek to bless us each and every day. We thank you, Lord, for the vision that you've given in our hearts to go out and uh, reach people for you in various ways. You've given each of us a calling to, to function within and Lord, I thank you that as we move, you reveal more and more to us each and every day. I thank you so much for Steve and for Sylvia. And I thank you for everybody who's listening to this, that Lord, you just reveal yourself more to them. Mm -hmm. Show yourself more to them. Let them see more of you and less of themselves. I thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, uh, how you are a loving father who wants nothing but the best for his kids. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, everybody, go connect with Mark Harbert, markharbert.com. And uh, you can follow us as well. Please like and subscribe. We've got a lot more kingdom influencers uh, that have been saved by grace coming <laughs> your way on the show. So uh, make sure you catch the ne next episode. God bless, and we'll see you all soon.